Hello, athletes. Welcome to One on One Live with Coach Blue and Athletic Director Marissa. Good afternoon. We have survived the holidays. You might have seen that we've had a a vacancy here in the spot for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, there's been so much going on with Project Elf, with Christmas and holidays, yeah. that we just couldn't do it justice. So we thought we'll take a break on this, but keep the other podcast alive and kicking. And it has been. It's been doing really well. Yeah. Absolutely. So I hope you're all finding yourself well. Hope 2023 has uh, so far been everything you hoped it would be and just a little bit more, right? Ex- excellent. And if uh, you're still like nurturing some of those New Year's goals, let's keep them going. Um, I haven't really talked about what I'm doing for New Year's. Uh, I don't want to jinx it because it's actually, what, day number three and it's going pretty well. I've got a lot more to do, but maybe I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, but no, this is your chance to jump on and uh, maybe submit some questions. We're not going to go uh, and do the uh, the Zoom feed today just because uh, we are alone at the helm and our producer is is uh, he's not here yet. So we're going to we're going to kind of manual this thing the way we used to. Right. Yeah. So. Old school. But uh, no, jump on. If you have questions, we can read those. We can give you guys some solutions, maybe some problems you're having. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can reach out to us. Addict2athlete.org, the website is the easiest. Uh, all of our content, uh, like, like communication lines, everything through that website, addict2athlete.org. Um, Marissa, let's touch base real quick and give some shout outs and thanks to our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Many of you have been receiving your Patreon gifts. Yes, I dropped some more. Uh, some of you guys who are local, picked them up. I dropped some more in the mail yesterday. Um, so if you're f- further, then you should have that coming soon. And anyone else who's local who hasn't been to a meeting, we're holding them hostage because sometimes we don't want to see your face. Yeah. We want to kind of so, hang out and, and uh, <laughs> so please come, see person. please come and visit. So again, we want to thank all of our Patreons. They're the ones that help keep this podcast up and running. Um, also, opens themselves up to bonus content and bonus material like yeah. merch, like these Patreon shirts, which are exclusive to only Patreon. No one else get them, gets them. And they're pretty cool. Do, made, we, who, do we need to show it off? Who made those? Yeah. yeah. Coach Blue. He designed it this year. Yeah. We should show us one of these times. So they'll probably be very disappointed. We won't do that. Be but surprised. Our, our Patreon levels start at $2 a month. Simple and easy. If you pay up front, you also get like 16% discount by paying a year in advance up to like a hundred dollars. We're grateful to everyone who donates. And if you are thinking about doing something like that, we would greatly appreciate it. Addict to athlete. No, it's patreon.com backslash addict to athlete. That's it. But the links on our website too. Yeah. Um, our super fans, we want to thank Patrick Forsyth, Sensei KP, Chris Williams, Brett Frew, Scott Foster, Holly Davies, Tara Butson, Jerem living in Brazil, Thurston, oh, man. Tracy Whitby, Steve Riggs, and Karen Hardy. Thank you. You guys yeah. are rock stars. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Then our rookie level is Wendell Wood, Earl Dyer, Sherry Polson, and Sionia Mary Inuk. Yeah, the the index there, uh, they should they should be back from their amazing excursion to the Rose Bowl. I saw their yeah. pictures. It's kind of like playing where in the world's Carmen San Diego. I've noticed with the Inux, they're they like travel a lot, dude. I, we got to start hanging out with them more. Yeah, they they, they just go went to like Disneyland or Disney World too. Yeah, oh goodness, what's the secret? We're coming. <laughs> Thank you guys, gals, so much. Then our pro level is Andrew Baird and Gary Thurston. Thank you guys, and our championship level subscribers are the Robinson family and Ron and Deloche. Awesome. Yeah. You are, you just got off a call like yeah, last week I got with, to with, uh, with D and spend some time with her and uh, such a great lady and trying to find out how she can help her community and in Montana. And we're grateful to her and yeah, all that she's doing. Yeah. And, and by the looks of Yellowstone, uh, the TV series, Montana needs lots of help. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're up there, D. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's very much the same thing, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, patreon.com slash addict TL athlete. Thank you guys so much for all that you're doing. You're helping get this podcast out a little further and we greatly appreciate it. Um, hey, Project Elf was a great success. Uh, I, this will be the last time I think you hear about it till next year. But yes. uh, just again, the, the overwhelming support uh, specifically from you, the athletes, from our donors. And then at the 11th hour, um, the, um, the Orem city police and fire, uh, they brought 
uh, two patrol SUVs, SUVs full of toys. Full of toys. Yeah. And I was taken aback. It was amazing. It was, so I want yeah. to thank them too for for uh, trusting us with such a delicate, uh, you know, I, I think gift. And yeah. for all those those who have received uh, some assistance through Project Elf, thank you so much for allowing Addict to Athlete to be part of that. Um, I, I, I kind of made mention several times leading up to Christmas, for those of you that donated your time, your funds, um, you know, even gifts that you donated, I, I really do hope that you you felt that that morning, um, yeah. you making the day of a family that otherwise would have went without. Yeah. And we even had a family, a couple other individual children too, like last minute, like Christmas Eve needing help. And thanks to our donors, thanks to the Orem police department, we had the funds and, and yeah. av- available toys to get that done in a very, very short time span. So you and I, we, we crushed that last part there. Yeah. So. Some people were like, why are you guys shopping now? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But no, thank you so much. Uh, again, we'll, we'll look forward to kicking that off next year, um, right around September, which is recovery month. So beyond that, Marissa, we've got a lot to discuss, just kind of some catch up, just some, you know, I don't know, just some stuff that you and I have been noticing, uh, specifically in the world of addiction recovery, mental health. Um, this month, it went by, December went by so fast. Yeah. And, you know, e- even with some personal stuff that our family had kind of experienced, it's kind of interesting when you are in a line of, of work that is so service-based, it's sometimes almost challenging and difficult to slow down and realize that sometimes service within that your own you know, home, walls at your home, yeah. your home, t- keeping your home court up, up to speed. Absolutely. Can be challenging. Um, we talked about this last time before we, we went on our hiatus about losing our, our sweet pup, uh, Hallie, and, um, you know, just the devastating, just void that it felt. And for many of you guys, you know, that we've, uh, we adopted a, a adopted, we didn't adopt it. We purchased this little goofball, yeah. uh, a little black pug that we named the dude uh, for obvious reasons. One of my favorite shows, the, 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 the Big Lebowski. Um, and, you know, we it was great. It was great. We had him in November and December. And then the little guy caught some kind of cough. We took him to the vet. And within a day of taking him to the vet, he passed too. Yeah. And it was a kick in the gut. 15 weeks old, 15 was... weeks old, this little thing. And, oh. you know, we just celebrated Christmas with him and we have all these cute little pictures of him in his little champion hoodie. And, um, December 20th, it didn't look as though it was anything bad. I mean, no. it's a little, little cough that most dogs get. They thought it might be kennel cough, but he hadn't been around anybody else. And Holy cow, Marissa, it was this like sucker punch of like, why can't we have dogs here? You know, I think Heaven's Hero is a is an indestructible tank because she's had to rely on all of us now, like Lots hanging on her house. because holy crud. But I noticed that with this loss of our, our second little dog here um, comes that do we dare do it again? Do we dare open our hearts? Do we dare, you know, should should the uh should the canine police come and investigate our house i mean what is going on right yeah. um and it's been interesting just kind of talking with the kids and stuff about like do they want to try again because you know when you have two very precious you know animals that you really did care about and even though it wasn't as long as hallie you still built the same kind of emotions yeah um i watched anger i watched sadness i watched devastation um, and it's like, why do we subject ourselves to that? But like our kids, I'm thinking they don't know. Like, uh, I, I worry that they're like something that something else is wrong. Mm-hmm. And it got me thinking a little bit about addiction recovery too, about like, you know, why people sometimes have a hard time believing that this will be the time for you. Um, you know, meaning that, that you're going to get it this time, that you're going to, you're going to surrender. You're going to do the treatment. You're going to do the therapy. Um, and that they're just banking on the fact that it's going to work this time. And then it doesn't, yeah. um, investing love is a very delicate process, isn't it? Yeah. But I think, you know, I've, I've gone through losing loved ones and, and pets, you know, my mom passed, it's coming up on is it five years, oh, five, five years. years, which is incredible um, to think about that. Cause it doesn't seem that yeah. long. Um, 
close friends. Uh, but yeah, I think every time I look at situations like that, it doesn't matter if it's an animal or, or a family, I think, would I do it again? Absolutely. Every time. Why? If inevitably the, the payment's going to be that feeling of loss, why? Why do we do that? Why do humans do that? Because the experience with them, the relationship, the love is worth it. The pain on the other end, at least for me, you know. I think it is for everybody if they're being genuine enough, you know. And I, I know a lot of times, you know, it was interesting to watch the children's um, reaction. Uh, you you were the first to find the little dude. And that was heartbreaking enough because watching the night before them take special care and yeah. attention to put him into a spot where he could be comfortable because he had the cough and we had the humidifier for him. Um, they, you, you made a very conscious effort to show me this video on our little camera that they called the dude cam so we could keep an eye on him um, about the attention they were giving him. And I think that was the cherry on top that burnt the most for me because it was yeah. like they took such special attention. And I watched both of them, our oldest and our, and our, you know, one of our middle there. Um, one went through sadness and the other one went through anger. Yeah. And it's so interesting because there's not a right or wrong way on how to grieve. You just do it. Um, but I noticed it took us a long time to talk about it too, yeah. which is, I think, very prevalent when you're in a situation or a family system that has something heavy that needs to be dealt with that without just addressing the issue, it can hang there and loom. And then the timing will never be right. So we've got to be able to talk about and and target the hard stuff when it happens. Because if not, then it gets swept under the rug and then the rug gets lumpy and then you trip and you break your neck, right? Yeah. Well, and I think it's also understanding how people grieve and now everyone and being patient. And like you say, it's, it's talking about it and it's discussing together what's going on. You know, the other night we were, we always have our family prayer together and that's kind of the time that we review everyone's day and what's coming up next and kind of have a, you know, a huddle, yeah. a, a team huddle, I guess. We do. And everyone was talking about him and laughing and looking at pictures. And it was like such a joyful thing. And I was just in the back. All I can remember is finding him that morning and oh, it was hard to, you know, have everyone talking about all the good things and yeah, but I had to talk to you about that, Yeah, you know, and absolutely. And, and everyone's I, on those different paths. I think sometimes too, we forget about that kind of thing too. You know, it's like, you know, we just also experienced the passing of a, of an athlete's mother um, that was just tender, you know, and, yeah. and the request was, you know, coach, will you say a few words, which I'm thinking, well, well yeah, I'm honored, but like, why? Right. Yeah. And they listed me on the program as a family friend. And to me, that meant so much, you know what I'm saying? And as I was sitting there and I was listening to some of the other, you know, like, like, like speakers and, and whatnot, um, this family needed healing as well. And it's interesting how when my mother passed, there was a portion of family healing. Yeah. Um, you talked to this athlete after, and she said the same thing. There's a portion of healing. Yeah. Um, what if we could do that before the loss? Why don't we? Yeah. You know, for me, I totally understood why, why I didn't. But that didn't mean I could not have reached out to my brothers, my sisters. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah mom may not have been a, a central hub in, in that will. But like, why did that domino into so much displacement with these relationships? You know, and yeah. it's, is it convenience? Is it not convenience? What is it that keeps us from doing that without having to have a situation of, you know, sadness or grief to bring everybody together? I don't know. I wish it would, but I don't know. I think people at the loss and passing of someone, everyone has different 
views and understanding and perspectives and every all of that changes and you're willing to maybe let go of resentments or heartache that yeah. maybe you can't or won't beforehand because of the shock of of the loss yeah um and i think it makes it different and you know yeah you would be nice to do it earlier but i mean how grateful are we that you were able to do it yeah even, even after your mom's passing yeah well i found out for you so guys. much right and yeah. so you know as i look at this kind of stuff and i'm thinking all right you know we've lost and, and i hate that term i don't like you that we've lost you know because when i know where they are they're not lost i have a very firm belief on a spiritual level where they go um, we use that just kind of as a, you know, an understanding, but with the passing of someone that you truly love and that your, you know, your heart gets heavy, um, also comes that rebound of like the only reason it hurts so deeply is because you loved. Yeah. And I've really drilled down on that recently. Um, when we've, we've had these passing of these, these goofy little animals that we somehow get so bonded to, but then to, you know, I guess, bridge that to, to human relationships. And if you allow that 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 pain, that crushing pain to to take its toll on you, like you forfeit the capacity to love again. And it doesn't mean that when you move forward or you, you know, like I said, you go you go out and you you find another dog or or you invest in another relationship, right? That that means that uh, those relationships that hold you, zero value. Yeah, you've forgot and you're, you know, laying to rest the other one. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. It to me, it's a way to just expand our hearts, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't think our hearts have limits, I think. But oftentimes that's a scary thing. I I remember even just having our first daughter, Brooklyn, and thinking about having another one and thinking there's no way I can another, love another child this much. Yeah. Um, and what happens? You do. You do. Your heart expands. Mm -hmm. And it just, it makes life more full and life more meaningful. So as I was kind of going through this stuff too, and I'm thinking, God, there's such heavy hearts and stuff. You know, it was a part of what I I, I spoke at the service that I wanted to share with the listeners today. Uh, and, and really it's one of these things where when I look at why, how, you know, people start getting into addictions, I started noticing some patterns in, in behaviors and the funniest thing kind of emerged when I started looking at like these synchronicities and these, these, these patterns that the, the components that make your heart yours, you carry so much ability to love, which means you also carry the ability to hurt. Yeah. And what I've noticed is that people with addictions, this might sound so foreign to some people, but you have really big hearts. In fact, they're so big that when you've allowed others in and they've they've tarnished it or they've abused it or they've hurt it, um, you obviously don't want other people to feel that pain. So you don't share that. And then you take more on, Yeah, you know? And so when I say, well, the reason why people use is because their hearts are too big. I love getting that, that crinkled nose look and that weird kind of side eye. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it boils down to this listeners. And this is something that I shared and I've shared this a couple of times with a few people um, that were near to, to my heart. Um, and, it, and it reads, it reads this, no one, nobody escapes being wounded. We know that to be true, yeah. right? We all do. Everyone. We are wounded people, whether physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. And this is why I think addiction is born out of pain. A hundred percent, something hurts, something didn't feel right. And so people say, well, I use because I wanted to see how far I could take things and stuff. Yeah. When you start getting addicted, it's because you're covering something that hurts. Um, so the main question is not how can we hide our wounds, right? So that we don't have to be embarrassed. Um, but how can we put our woundedness into the service of others? Yeah, that is a scary thing when you think about it, because that's basically saying I'm laying out this bridge to hurt with other people when I myself may not believe I have the capacity to hurt anymore or even to heal what what's 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 hurt. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So and I said this even today in, in a session that I was with today, who heals the healers? Um, Think about that. All you moms out there. Right, all you moms out there who uh, are there at the beck and call when your kids have a scraped knee, or 
you know, the dads, when, when the son or daughter comes home and they've had a, a rough night with uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Um, where do you take the pain that you have? If you're the healer of your family, who heals you? Yeah. And I, and I think about this, you know, when I was serving as a bishop and when I was a counselor and, and a therapist and a coach, and I'm like, wait a minute, I've got some pains in my heart too. Where do I go? And it was a genuine question when I asked this uh, at my buddy Derek's uh, you know, services. But the more I've been able to ponder that, the more I, I think I've come up with an answer, not only for me, uh, you know, a relationship with, with God, my higher power, but also this team. Yeah. Who heals the healer? This team. I've watched this team come out of, of really obscure places in life to kind of surround one another to create that greatness, to like seriously say that, we're going to hold you up until you can stand on your own two feet. We're not going to run it for you, but we're going to be here by your side. I've seen yeah. it so much this last couple of months and a couple of weeks, even you know, we were, we were afraid and kind of nervous to even talk about the passing of our little pup because I'm like, I don't want the sympathy, but that get, that takes away someone else's ability to feel. Yeah. You know, but it goes on to say, this is where compassion begins to kind of play a, a part in our lives. This compassion asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion, and anguish. And compassion challenge, uh, challenges us to cry out with those in misery, um, to, to mourn with those who are lonely, and to weep with those who are in tears. Compassion requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable, and powerless with the powerless. Compassion means full immersion into the condition of being a human. Wow. That's yeah. in, I remember putting this down and, and, and speaking this because, you know, Derek, when I was sharing this with him, um, was a counselor that taught me how to be a counselor. And although he was rough around the edges, I loved him so much. And he had a huge heart. Yes, he did. Even people that have, you know, I, I look at even my mother and I can say, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, her heart must have been huge because she never talked about it. She always hid it. Yeah. You know, compassion is one of these things too, that if we don't realize we can't just give it, we have to save some for ourselves. We can get ourselves into some trouble. Can't we? If oh, we, for sure. if we give too much without saving some for ourselves. Yeah. You notice yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you, you, you know, this exists that you say that there's so many people who struggle with addiction um, because their hearts are too big because they often don't save enough for themselves. They give to others and, and are the listening ear and, and the help and, you know, that soon they're just holding so much pain, it's hard for them to keep going, you know? Absolutely. And and when you look at it through those lenses too, you start to understand that then who am I to like label or to blame or to, you know, I, I guess even like chastise someone that's going through this kind of an experience. It's a, it's a hard one. Well, because it's personal and there's some stuff that hurts that, that we want them to, to feel the measure of the pain that we've experienced. Um, and they won't because it's, it's it's different for each person. Although the yeah. players are the same, the pain's different. I'm, I guess we're getting long-winded with all this to say in 2023, listeners, what I would love for you to do is to open your eyes and your heart just a little bit wider. We're starting to bump into the residual effects of everything that we've kind of like tried to flag and, and bring awareness to. Yeah. Uh, are we aware yet? Yes, we are. We can't use, we didn't know as an excuse anymore because um, a couple of weeks ago, about a month or two ago now, I bumped into a, a young man who would have fallen into the category of being an opiate orphan. We've talked about this um, for the last probably 11 years, specifically about the age is now coming to adulthood by which uh, these kids whose family members, primary caregivers have fallen victim to the opiate um, epidemic is are, they're now entering adult age. And the scary and sad thing about that is they are emotionally detached. Yeah. And since this young man I bumped into um, I've had two other interactions, um, both of which were female and my goodness, the emotional, distress is is tangible you can feel it yeah and I, I didn't realize how 
how big of a landslide this is going to be. It's Are we ready? No, no. So what do we do? <laughs> there's, so, there's so many avenues. There's so many areas that need to be lifted and, and, and beefed up. And, um, you know, I've, I hear from, yeah, some of these caregivers I've heard from of the, some of these opiate orphans that are now, you know, grandparents and grandparents age where they're supposed to be enjoying retirement. And all they want is to just give this young one life and support and love, but they're also exhausted. And oftentimes too, these little ones come with so many additional problems physically health wise, um, because of maybe being born addicted or other situations that they're just feeling stuck and there aren't resources. There's, I mean, there are some, you can find some, but we need so much. We need so much. We need the social support. We need the, um, emotional and counseling and, but we also need, you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy. We need, um, medical help and medical intervention. And I mean, the list goes on and on. It's gotta be a full team approach to be able to help these guys. As we've talked about in the past, it's literally going to take a village. Yeah. It's going to take a village to help these young ones. So in 2023, what I'm hoping uh, athletes, you specifically, uh, you know, world and community uh, after this, obviously, um, we need to be aware of who we are and where we are at all times. You don't know that young kid that's behind the register of a fast food place or the the clerk at a grocery store or, you know, uh, sweeping up the hair at a salon. You don't know what their background is. And if the numbers are correct, you got to remember we're losing uh, now upwards of, of what two to two ninety almost a day. Yeah, from all substances, that is a lot of people that are left in the wake. And so you probably won't realize until it was too late if you say something or do something that could be emotionally like. like like almost damaging to one of these, these kids. And you're going to say, well, they need to grow up. They need to be tough. They can't. You know why? Um, They've never been taught how to. They don't have yeah the support resources that most anyone else You're going to see it in areas of employment, of school, of, of, uh, you know, of recreation. You're going you're to see this and you're going to wonder why these kids aren't so connected to the emotional side of things. And it's because of these situations. So we have to now kind of take a different role as, as mentors and uh, as, as kind of like, um, I don't know, um, directional type influences where we can be patient and mindful and know that like someone on the other side of that, that, uh, that counter might be suffering. I hate to say this, but you know, I jumped to conclusions quite a bit. And I remember one time jumping to a conclusion yeah. that made me feel about that small Yeah. during the winter Olympics uh, when we were on the tracks train, me and, and Marissa and Jeremy living in Brazil, Thurston, <laughs> and this kid had his leg up on another uh, um, uh, seat and the train was packed and I'm like wanting Marissa to sit down and, and I'm kind of like leaning over to Jerem and I'm like, <clears throat> whose kid is this? Like, this should teach him some respect. And immediately when I finished that sentence, his mom looked at me and, and ripped a coat off of his leg and the kid had a wickedly broken leg. I'm like, I'm sorry about that. You know? And so even I have to take my own advice and be like, we got to be careful. Yeah. So, you know, I guess what I'm saying is in that whole long winded story was to basically prepare you all that like things are changing drastically and quickly. And in order to do this, there's a certain sense of, of emotional intelligence that you've got to be able to possess. And if you don't know it, don't be afraid to ask about it. Yeah. How does someone ask about appropriate emotional regulation or, or, you know, what is emotional intelligence? How do we teach? Is it something you can be taught? It can be taught. It takes, what is it? It takes time. It What's takes, emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is being able to, a lot of self-awareness, being able to know and understand your feelings and assess yourself, but it's also being able to understand and relate um, to others and being able to understand how they're feeling without always using words, which is really hard to learn. It's hard to assess. Some people are better at it than others naturally. Um, But a lot of times it does take, yeah, parental help and 
you know, school and teachers, but a lot of school and teachers are so stuck now on the academics and being able to meet these, these standards for end of year testing. They can't teach some of the other stuff that maybe they did teach and, and learn about in the past. Yeah. You know, and, you know, recently I've been deleting social media. So, and, uh, you know, last night I was, I was watching one and, oh my gosh, you guys, it just burnt me the wrong way. And I was started getting vicious in the comments. I'm like, okay, this isn't mentally healthy. Right. Yeah. And so I deleted it. And the thing is, I've been thinking a lot about it because I'm like, all I was seeing was the absolute worst in people. And they were playing it off as though it was comedy and being funny. And it wasn't. It was so disrespectful. We're talking about, you know, again, mocking other people's views or religions or politics or or what have you. And I'm thinking, surrounded by people that are cheering and supporting. And I'm thinking, what in the hell is happening to our society? You know, yeah. um, to the point where I'm like, where's the good stuff? You know, and I got me real. It got me thinking quite quite deeply yeah. on like, is this really the direction we're headed? Are we always looking for that, that funny little thing or, or, you know, or, or the, or the, uh, you know, the, the quickest way to get a laugh or to get a view. Um, when another one popped around, that was the, uh, the individual on the, on the bills that uh, it was hit and then fell down after, after mm. the football play oh my and how scary that is that life could be so fragile and taken away so quickly. Um, and then the next one was again, racial slurs. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, are we this, are we seriously this mixed up? What is going on? Where is the anger coming from? Where is the frustration? Because yeah. what we're seeing is if we don't get a clue, that pot's just going to get deeper and deeper with the people that can't get out. So, you know, a, a whole big soapbox on like, you know what? Let's be cool with each other this 2023. Let's start to heal a little bit because we've been through hell for some yeah. strange reason. It hasn't just been the pandemic. We can blame it on the pandemic, but it's been the residual effect. It was interesting. Um, I really thought that like the pandemic might have brought people together, kind of like a 9-11. And boy, were we wrong, right? Yeah, certain people. I mean, like it's just crazy to see this deep divide of like crazy, you know, conspiracy at the same time, this righteous indignation and, and just, wow, you know, like, yeah. like bizarre. Um, the, the whole, the whole spectrum is just, is just so broad, but then that means if it's not, you know, if what, what's, what's a champion's challenge, right? Do it even if it's not your job. Yeah. Well then, let us be the people that that bring a little bit of humanity back to some of the situations and places and things we get to kind of you know immerse ourselves in. When you're running uh, a, a race, be mindful of the volunteers. When you're you know not able to race but they need volunteers, step up. Um, you know when you see someone that's hurting, uh, talk with them. They don't sometimes they don't need finances or, or, or whatnot, they might just need your time. Listen. Like let's step yeah. up and fill some of the voids because I think that this team's a bit in a very unique position to like lead the charge on creating that more excellent way. I don't know. Yeah. Or is that me just kind of getting all goal oriented and, you know, 2023. You have to start little and yeah. the big things come by, you know, little increments and that's something everybody can do. Absolutely. And so, you know, just a little bit of what was on our minds. I mean, we're not going to, you know, get up here to be too blowhardy on you, but like, <laughs> you know, it's just, just a few things that I've noticed. Um, you know, Merce and I, we're, we're going over some stuff we want to train the coaches on. And one thing that I really want to impress on their minds and yours listeners is don't be afraid of your leadership. Don't be afraid of, of who you authentically are. I, I've noticed that some people hesitate when it comes to doing things like like leading meetings or leading workouts or or answering the phone if if something sensitive comes because they don't know if they have it in them. And you do. Yeah. You absolutely do. Um, Again, it's learning to trust yourself. Yeah. And yeah. it's not about comparing yourself, whatever. You do your best and that's all that matters, no matter what it is. Um trust your instincts, learning how to trust your instincts so that you can back it up and follow with what is your best. And again, if you start getting criticism when you did something that was your best, screw them. Yeah. I mean, that's... no, no one needs to hear that. It isn't somebody you need to have around and you need to have in your life. Um, 
you just do you and you do your best at it. And that's, that's what should matter. Yeah. So, you know, some goals that we have for this team are, 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 you know, getting very deep into the, into the training of the coaches and expanding the added to athlete program to the rural communities in Utah and beyond um, jump on the website, added to athlete.org. If you think about, you know, doing some grassroots level change, it begins uh, 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 on that page. I mean, a silver, silver coach, yeah. um, but more so just being a human. And so, you know, there's, we have some amazing events coming up this year. You know, we've got some groups now that are starting here at the facility that are going to be great and flirting with the idea. And I'm going to put a poll out there here soon, maybe, you know, you know, February or March about what groups, you know, you, the listeners slash, you know, participants want, whether that be a, an exit strategy for pornography use, or if it's, you know, emotional eating and, and how to combat that. Um, there's a lot that we want to do that we have the tools, resources, and knowledge to help you with, but we want to make sure that it's going to be beneficial for those that could take part in it. Um, you know, finally, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about some personal stuff that we're doing that I'm doing. Um, and that is, uh, Brock Bevel from, you know, uh, the agents of recovery podcast yeah. somehow wired me into doing the 75 hard challenge and I'm mm-hmm. on day three and, you know, battling a wicked cold. I'm losing my voice. Even right now, as we speak, you probably heard some wicked, creepy coughing a second ago, yeah. <clears throat> but even though I've been like wickedly under the, under the weather, um, I've completed the goals. And the thing is, is a, I, don't wanna, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to you know, say I, it's going to be easy, but like right now it's manageable. And I've never done anything like this because I've always kind of found a way out. Um, and it's kind of a cool thing to push myself. Um, you know, some personal things that, that I wanted to make change with. That I thought eh, when it's convenient, it's never going to be convenient. No, but it scares the credit out of me, but I know Coach Johnson out in Vernal's done it. I know that other people have survived it. And there's a good little team he's assembled. So let's also this year challenge you to do something that really scares you. You're going to hear an awesome podcast that we did yesterday, uh, Agents of Recovery, about this specific, you know, reaching your ultimate potential, or your TILO, so to speak. And uh, I'm telling you, there's some neat things that happen when you face some of the fears that uh, really are just, you know, all in your head. Yeah. Well, and I think with like the 75 hard, like, obviously you want, you have the team right now around you to support you. Like it's a whole group. How many are you in the group? Oh, it was like nine of us. Yeah. Like, I know that still seems intimidating and scary, but that's the best time to do it is when you have somebody else to support you in it Mm -hmm. because it's going to make it so much easier. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, maybe by the end of this, I'll, I'll be so buff that we'll need to get an extra, extra like long lens for the Light camera, lens. but you know, we'll, we'll see about that. Show. But listeners, yeah, do something that's going to push you out of your comfort zone. Be, be the person that you needed when you were young for these kids out there that are going to need you. And then just know that when you invest in someone or something that you truly love, when and if it comes to an end, it only hurts because you love and you have the capacity to love so much more. Um, us alpha males don't like talking about that, but we need to every now and then, don't we? Yeah. So continue to follow us on our social medias. I mean, we'd love to have you guys jump in discussions. We'll get Max back here behind the uh, the producer's desk so we can do some, uh, some Q&A. Um, questions, always welcome. Uh, Blue at addedtoathlete.org. Dot org. Marissa at AdditToAthlete.org. Yep. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's just make 2023 a year that we can just, you know, maybe put that reset button, take an extra, an extra deep breath and just do some really awesome stuff for people yeah. that uh, we don't need the help. Absolutely. So until next time, turn that mess into a message. We would like to thank our Patreon subscribers. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, check out patreon.com backslash addicttoathlete. There you can see our fundraising platforms and gain access to all of our bonus episodes and receive exclusive A to A swag. We'd like to thank our super fans, Karen Hardy, Steve Riggs, Tracy Whitby, Jerem Thurston, Tara Butson, Holly Davies, Scott Foster, Brett Frew, Chris Williams, and Sensei KP Brown. Then our rookie levels, Sione, Mary Inuk, Sherry Poulsen, and Earl Dyer. Pro level, Andrew Baird, Wendell Wood, and Gary Thurston. And champion level subscribers, the Robison family, and Ron and D. Loesch. Thank you all. Check out patreon.com.